I'm gonna keep it real with you. If you're watching this, your motion design sucks. Nah, I'm just playing. Anyways, in today's video, we are gonna be breaking down Iman Gotzi's animations. His animator's animation style is pretty pretty cool. I like it. I don't so much like the motion blur, but overall it has a pretty cool look and it's super well executed. We're going to be breaking down three different ones. One is the B cam animations. He usually has like a side profile where he has an animation out to the side or like in front of him. The second thing is a lower third animation, an animation that is only in the lower third of the screen that just helps him as a visual tool to tell the story that he's telling. The last thing is a full screen animation and it'll be a social media, more specifically Instagram animation. Without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects where I have a 1920 by 1080 composition, 24 frames per second, cause um, that's a good way to start. So starting here with the um, camera. Uh, I've just taken a screenshot, so don't even. It's it's just a screenshot, just to you know give us some guidance. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna make a rectangle and kind of fill this space over here. And I'm just holding spacebar as I move this around to get the right shape and placement ish. I will simply center it up and then I will add it to a pre comp. And this is gonna be side animation. The reason that I'm adding this to a pre-comp is because he likes to put this in, well his animator likes to put this in a perspective so it's kind of angled in, but it's easier to do all the animations first and then positioning it in 3D space afterwards. His style is typically using a grayish, blackish um, square with some rounded edges and a stroke. That is exactly what we are going to be doing. First of all, I'm gonna add a little bit of roundness to our shape, that looks pretty good. And then for the fill color, I'm gonna click up here and select a gradient. I want it to be a linear gradient because that's well, uh, what it seems like he uses. I'm gonna go and select my colors. I'm gonna turn the opacity up for this one. Should be a standard at 100, but um, yes. Yeah, so this one, we're gonna keep at an off black dark gray for the top color, which is gonna make it a little bit lighter and actually maybe even darken this just ever so slightly and then we're gonna add a stroke and we're just gonna make it uh, an off gray and maybe a two point maybe even a little bit thicker than that maybe a five point stroke that's already the basic shape that we've got down first we are gonna add the text and in his example he's only doing 10k which is rookie numbers so we're gonna do um, let's do 20,000 you know we gotta up one up him a little bit and I'm just gonna change the color of this text to something lighter so we can see what we're doing, like an off-white, slight grayish. I'm not sure what font he uses, but it's definitely some sort of clean sans serif. So I will, of course, be using my good old friend, Helvetica Mule. You just want something that's pretty, pretty simple. You don't want nothing too crazy. That's how we do it around here. He uses a lot of gradient for his text layers, so I'm gonna add a gradient ramp, and I'm just gonna move these points I'm slightly above and slightly below and I'm just going to swap the colors and make this pretty dark and we can just move this up a little bit and move this down just to get a nice gradient like so. We want to add a line so I'm just going to use my pen tool and I'm just going to make a line. I'm going to add a butt cap so just rounded cap and that's just going to make sure that in the edge it just has a nice rounded edge to it. But the fun part of this animation is going to be the number counter. So the way I'm going to do this is I am simply going to type a bunch of numbers. Let's do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I'm just going to center it up. So we have 15 right in the middle and I'm just gonna keep scaling it up as such. That looks pretty good. We can, of course, copy our gradient from our other text. I'm just gonna copy it to this and change the points just so we get that gradient again. We're gonna use a rectangle tool and I'm just gonna make a little selection around the middle number. I'm gonna remove the stroke and just add a fill. It can be whatever color you want. We're just gonna use this as a mask. And then I'm gonna take my numbers and I'm just gonna pick whip it to the mask. And I'm going to add a fast box blur to our mask so we can get some of that vignetting that he often uses just to see a little bit of the numbers here. I'm gonna keyframe the position. So let's go about one second forward, keyframe that position, go back a little bit and scroll until let's say 10 is in the middle and you can always use the proportional grid to keep it centered and maybe we don't even want to end it at 15 maybe we want to end it at 18. remove the proportional grid and i'm going to select my keyframes and add sexy speed to it 
So it's gonna start off with 10 and then scroll up to 18. The user's motion blur, so we're gonna do the same thing um, to keep everything true to, to, to life. And you use a little bit of motion blur. We want to animate our little lines. So for that, I'm just gonna add a trim path to it. Let's move this up a little bit. Let's set a keyframe for the start and the end and then go back and set them both to 50 and stretch this out a little bit more. Select them and add sexy speed. And we have a line animating out. Last thing is the text animation. And from what I can tell, he uses a mix of a blur and opacity animation for most of his text animations. I'm gonna animate the opacity. So right here, let's say we want it to be fully fully seen, go back to the beginning, set it to zero, then add a fast box blur and keyframe the blur radius, set that to zero, go to back a little bit so we can see what we're doing, increase that to about five should do it. And we can select both of them and add a sexy speed. And if we play that back, we have that. We can copy our blur radius and our opacity to our position, uh, to our number counter, paste it in there. We should have both and then you can see that all animates in and I don't feel like this is super centered. So I'm going to turn on the proportional grid again and line it up just a little bit. That is the base of our animation. One thing is he usually animates it opening up as well. So if we take all our layers and we just move them up a little bit and go forward to right about here, select our shape layer, hit S for scale, go set a keyframe, go to the beginning and unlink them and then you can animate the scale of each one and just set that to zero. Select both, sexy speed once again, play it back and just like that we have a base basic animation. But sometimes he reduces the opacity of the background a little bit just so you can see it a little bit in the back so why not do that? And of course we're gonna add motion blur to our box as well because that's what he would do. So one thing that I love about his style is that he uses pressurized time. So we're gonna start by adding that and just set that to 12. And then he also adds a little bit of boil or like a textured look to the animations. On our pre-comp, I'm just gonna add a, an instance of tabulant displays. In his case, I don't think it's animated most of the time, but I like to animate it just because it gives it that little bit more oomph in the bump. So I'm gonna set the amount to about 20, the size to two, open up my evolution options and all click the random seed. And then I'm just gonna type random parentheses four, and then that's just gonna animate it ever so slightly. And I'm gonna add a posterized time to it as well. So enter right before, add posterized time, six, duplicate this, set the other instance to eight by eight. I'm just gonna move posterized time to the bottom. And if we play this back, we have something that looks kind of like this. Now, as I said, we're gonna put it in 3D space. So toggle your switches, turn on 3D space for it and move it up to the left and click on rotation. And we're gonna rotate it on the Y axis just a little bit like that we have our first animation. Pretty simple, pretty quick. And it just has a good little bit of movement, nothing too crazy and it looks pretty clean. The next animation is a lower third. I'm going to make a new composition, Command N or Control N if you are on uh, Windows. And I'm just going to name this a lower third. Then I'm going to go to my project and I'm going to add my main cam. And once again, I'm just going to scale it down to fit. First thing I'm going to animate is a little gradient that comes up from the bottom. So I'm just going to make a rectangle here. I'm going to turn it to black. I'm going to add a false box blur, just like that. So the difference is minimal, but it is there. It's just going to give us a little bit more separation for our animation. The way he animates this is just a simple opacity look. So I'm just going to keep him the opacity at 100, go back to the beginning and set that to zero. Playing that back, we just have the background darkening a little bit and just putting some focus on our animation itself. Next thing is our little path. So I'm going to remove the fill and we are going to add a orangey, pastel -y, orangey, reddish kind of color here. And we are just gonna click, drag, and increase path here. That is pretty decent. I'm just gonna finagle it a little bit, you know. We need to animate the path itself. And for that, we are of course gonna do a trim paths. So I'm gonna add a trim paths and set a keyframe for the end, go back, set that to zero playing it back we have a nice little animation and we can just scoot that up add our nice little sexy speed i'm gonna pre-comp this now because we don't need to look at the background anymore and we're just gonna do low third animation i want to do our main path just name this duplicate it and rename it um, section the way i'm gonna be doing this is i'm first i'm gonna change the color to brighter orange, maybe a little reddish. And then we are gonna manipulate the trim paths. It's gonna be slightly different this time. We're gonna move that and we're gonna select a little path or a little section of it over here. 
So I'm gonna set both of these to the same value, 81. We have the whole thing coming in, and then right about here, I'm gonna keyframe both the start and the end. Then I'm gonna add about 10 to each side, so plus 10%, so that'll be 91. And over here, I'm gonna minus 10, that'll be 71, just to get an even selection. If we don't like the placement of it, we can always go to the offset and just move it around however we want. All right, so there's another detail that we're gonna add to this. I'm gonna duplicate my main path and name this markers, and I'm gonna change the color to black and open it up and go to contents, trim pot, uh, sorry, shape, stroke, and add a dash and a gap. And that way we can control it a little bit. So if we increase the gaps a good bit, um, let's do it right about here so we can, so it kind of marks where we want our little section to be. So we can pre-comp these, and I'm of course gonna add motion blur to it, pre-comp these and name it path, and then turn it into 3D space and rotate it a little bit. So first, animate it like this and maybe rotate it a little bit like such. And just kind of put it into perspective a little bit. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it does seem, based on the example, that he uses just a little bit of that. I'm just going to go back into our original composition and add some text. I'm just going to put 18 like he did in his video. Scale it down. And we're just going to place it along this path, rotate it a little bit, scale it down a little bit more, and change the fill to a darker color. I'm going to use this section as a mask, and I'm going to reshow this. And so it animates in together. I'm going to go back into our working composition. We need to add some text, place that in the middle, and scale it up a tad bit. Go back into our side animation and copy the gradient, put it on our text. V. This time, it looked like it was a word by word animation. So we can always do that with text properties. So go into text, go into opacity, open it up, go to advanced, and then instead of characters, do words, set the opacity to zero. And we want it to animate this way. So set a keyframe for start at zero, move it to the beginning, set it to 100. And that is gonna be the base of our animation. We can add some easing to it, move it forward a little bit, because we don't want it to come in before that. We kind of want it to match up with that. We are, of course, going to add a blur too. So once again, we're going to go into our text and add, add a blur parameter. And not to that one. I just wanted to add it to a separate one. Blur. Let's set that to 15. So we're going to animate it this way. So with the inset to 100, keyframe to start at zero, move it to line up with our first keyframe then move it to 100, add the same easing and move the first keyframe for the blur forward just a couple of frames, just so we get a little bit more blurriness as it comes in. The final thing we have to add to this is this little emoji that he also uses, which is placed over here and with a slight shadow on it. So I'm just gonna scale it up. I think it just comes in with a simple position and opacity. So P and then shift T, keyframe those two, go back a little bit set the opacity to zero and move it down a little bit and select both keyframes you can even space them out a little bit more and as soon as that 18 comes up we want this emoji to come in we also want to give it a drop shadow so we can always just go in drop shadow 180 drop the distance a little bit that is the main animation we now of course go back into the first um, thing we did copy all of these effects from our pre-comp Go into our lower third, paste it in there. And just like that, we have a lower third animation. This one is a bit high up, so we can go in. We can take, that's gonna be the really tough mile. Move that down, move our gradient down, such, and take this and this, and also move that down. We have a lower third animation. It's finally time to start the third and last animation which is the Instagram one. Make a new composition I'm just going to name this Instagram and to celebrate the goat we of course have his Instagram. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is cut out each individual element. This might be easier to do in Photoshop but I'm just going to do it in After Effects so you guys can get a feel of how you how I would do it. First thing is every single picture needs to be cut out because we're going to use mainly that. So I'm just going to start with one picture and I'm just going to use the rectangle tool and we can always go in and select these points and just trying to get it as tight as you possibly can and just duplicate hit M click the mask and hold shift and move it over all right that is all the photos so now we need to do the main bit so I'm just gonna duplicate it again delete that and I think we are going to do 
the photo as one. So just select this photo here, duplicate it, and delete that mask. And we are gonna do the name and the check mark as one. Duplicate M to bring up the mask, delete, and let's do the buttons as another element. Duplicate, mask, remove it, and let's do all of this as one and we're just gonna add another mask right here just to get that line in there too now we we have all of this separated on all the layers so we can start animating we're gonna start with the pictures i'm gonna hit p to bring up the position go back go forward to about one second keep in the position go back to about 12 frames and move it all down add some easing to it play it back and that's pretty decent i'm actually gonna just move this back just so it take one whole second just to make it a little bit smoother and match its style more. We do want to sequence these. So we have picture six as the first and that and that, and then we have it opposite. So I'm just gonna move that around, select all of them. And using motion tools, I am gonna just get the right order of set them by three. It might be pretty good. Sequence and play them back. And then we're just gonna extend all of these. We also want to animate all of this. So we have the profile picture info username, click the P, go to about two seconds, just so we know where we are at, go back, to one second so everything is a one second animation move the position up select all of them ease them with sexy speed we are going to select all our layers again and just switch around the sequencing that will come in pretty nice and then i'm going to turn on transparency and i'm just going to select this one info thing and i am going to add a linear color key and i'm just going to select the black color here and that's pretty pretty decent get a lot of that blackness out of there it's going to be on a black background anyway so it doesn't have to be perfect just because we don't want it to overlap or cover any of the information that we actually want to show that is pretty much all there is to do for the instagram animation we can of course add motion blur to it because that's the iman gatsi way of making ten thousand dollars a month and just name it instagram turn on motion blur again of course go into our lower thirds and just copy all of this paste it and now we have something that looks kind of like this. It's a little bit much with the two turbulent displays, so I'm just gonna take the one off for this instance because there's a lot of text. We just want it to be kind of smooth and you know, we don't want it to be too distracting. Final thing we're gonna do pretty much is add it into 3D space, open up the rotation, give it some slight X rotation, maybe move it up a little bit. All we're gonna do is play that back and we have an Instagram animation. You can of course go in, you can animate the position. So if you hit P, open up the position, zoom in a little bit and that'll be a pretty neat little animation of it coming in and just slowly zooming in that covers most of the principles behind iman gotzi's animations a lot of turbulent displays pressurized time and motion blur that is definitely the key to doing this his team definitely has a good feel for the animations and how to best describe the story he's telling so big ups to that team i hope you guys learned something new or at least enjoyed doing a break breakdown of this and as always don't just copy your style just use it to learn something use the techniques learn the techniques get some inspiration but don't just copy it it's not nice it's not good practice but with that being said i'll uh, catch you guys next week so thank you